singing Away in a Manger, number 72 in your missile. Please join us in singing Silent Night, number 59 in your missile.
Please join us in singing What Child Is This? Number 76 in your missal. the herald angels sing number 73 in the missile hark the herald angels sing
God rest ye merry gentlemen. Please join us in singing Angels We Have Heard on High, number 64 in your missile.
Merry Christmas. We are happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. These are today's announcements. There is a gift for you when you exit Mass today, a book called Life is Messy. Please take one today with you. The parish office is closed until Monday, December 27th for Christmas. Father Wilhelm, Father Wirth, and the staff of St. Joseph's wish you and your families a very blessed Christmas. Father Wilhelm is the celebrant for this Mass, assisted by Deacon Ken and Deacon Wagen, and I am Lois Buckmeyer, your lector. Mass will begin momentarily. As we stand together, please have your candles prepared and ready as we light them as we'll be coming down the aisles. Please join us in singing O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 69 in your missile.
please to kneel. And as we bless the Christmas crib, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, we praise and bless this Christmas manger scene. The practice of erecting such mangers was begun by St. Francis of Assisi as a mean to set forth the message of Christmas. When we look upon these figures, the Christmas gospel comes alive and we are moved to rejoice in the mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. We made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary to our lives. He brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless this manger scene and all who look upon it. And may it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him, who is God with us, the Savior of all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let's sing together our song as we adore Jesus in the crib. Please join us in singing Away in a Manger, number 72 in your missal. <laughs> at the end of the pew as you can place them in and I ask us now to stand as we sing our opening hymn as we begin the Christ Mass. Please join us in singing O Come All Ye Faithful number 74 in your missal.
Good morning and Merry Christmas. God's blessings to all of you as we come together to truly to greet this happy morning as we come to celebrate the great festival, our God who became visible. He became one of us and he came to earth to love us and to show us the way that leads to him, that he promises to walk with us and to never to abandon us. What a wonderful God that we have. And so let's celebrate this birth of Jesus with all that we have, worshiping him with our hearts, our souls, and our minds. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. As we now prepare our hearts to celebrate the Christ Mass, Holy Christmas, let's call to mind our sins. Let's ask the Lord for healing. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, 
God, who have made this most sacred night, radiant with the splendor of true light, grant, we pray, that we, who have known the mysteries of his light on earth, may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for our scripture readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wanderer, Counselor, God, hero, father forever, prince of peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is born our Savior. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness, lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. You know, I can't help but to say that over and over and over again because it is a proclamation. It is something to let people know what has gone on, what is going on, and how we're living our life by the way we say that proclamation to bring glad tidings of great joy. We come by that very way that we bring Jesus Christ with us. All of our readings tonight speak about a proclamation. That word means proclaim, and that that T-I-O-N means an action. It means we are to believe what we have heard, and we take this as our own, and we live by it. Everything that we say, everything that we think, might I even say everything that we breathe, even this great incense, everything we breathe, we breathe the love, the joy, and the greatness of what God has prepared for those who love him. In the church for the last 2,000 years, the deacon is always supposed to make a proclamation, but we um, have really gotten out of practice with that in the church where we bless the crib. But the proclamation is this long. Now, one of the things I was going to read it to you, but do you know what? I forgot my glasses. So, lucky you. It's going to be a shorter homily, and I will not read this whole proclamation. But what it does, it goes through nine different epochs, meaning different times, of all the way from the creation of the earth through the flood all the way through Abraham being chosen to the moment that God comes to the world. And this was supposed to be proclaimed through the whole city. And as that Christmas celebration would take place, this is what the town crier would proclaim. This part right here. Got to step back a little bit so I can see it. Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea, and was made man. This is the nativity of our Lord according to the flesh. That's the way that proclamation ends. And it means that Jesus has come. God in the flesh. He looks like you and I. And that God is no longer far away, but he came to us and as he promised, he would always be with us, always walk with us. How are we doing out there? How are we doing as Christians? They always say if one Christian lived out their lives according to the teachings of Jesus Christ, the world would be transformed in a moment. But do you know what? We're all struggling. We all have situations where we do our best. And sometimes we're shining. Sometimes we're not so bright. (laughs) And what happens in that time, God still doesn't abandon us. God makes us promise that he will be with us always. So as we make this proclamation, Merry Christmas, as we come to say Jesus Christ is the Word of God blowing out from the Father into the womb of our Blessed Mother, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born like us in all things but sin, that he came to bring joy to this world where there are struggles. That second reading from the book of Titus, it's another proclamation that as we have been baptized into Christ Jesus, you and I, our lives are to be lived differently and we're supposed to be seen. That means we're supposed to exude from the very pores of our being that we belong to Jesus. How's that done? Well, first and foremost, here tonight, 
you make a public proclamation that Christ Jesus is Lord with us. And we come to worship him tonight in the word and as he is present on this Eucharist to come to feed every one of us, to strengthen us for the great battle, for the journey of life, and not to give up. Not to say, well, the world is going to hell in a handbasket and I'm not going with it. What attitude is that? We are to be involved. We're supposed to get involved with life. We're supposed to live life to the full. That means not halfways, not three-fourths, but all the way. And that means that you and I, by living our life to the full, that it has transformed us, yourself. That you're convinced by the message. Because there's only two ways that we can take Jesus Christ. One, we all know it, that he was a crazy man and lots of people are following, following him and we're all duped. All three million Catholics throughout the world and all Christians throughout the world were all duped. We don't know any better. Or the other way which I believe and you believe that your life is a proclamation that Jesus Christ, by his birth, by his life, by his passion, by his death on the cross, by his resurrection, by his ascension into heaven, by these glorious acts that we who have been witness to, we now come to believe with our whole heart, mind, and soul, and we are to be witnesses to one another of that great mystery of God coming to be with us. Listen again as those wonderful angels come to visit the shepherds. I had the great gift to offer Mass in the shepherd's field. And when that beautiful church, that as we walked in just to experience these very simple people, and what they did is that they followed the star, they listened to the angel, and they were told not to be afraid. And then the angel said, Don't be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy. That will be for you and all people. For today in the city of David, the Savior is born. So, dear friends, as we say Merry Christmas, and we have 12 wonderful days to live Christmas out, do not start to get taken away by the 90% sales. Don't get taken away by looking forward all the way for the new year and what we're going to be doing in the new year to make our life different, that we're going to try to make it better. Let's live out these days and let Christ guide us. Let Christ bless us. And you receive him in your heart. And he promises to bring great joy. And as he says to us, you who are faithful with me in this, I will be faithful to you throughout your lives, and I will have you one day be with me in paradise. That's God's promise to his faithful sons and daughters. This isn't make-believe. It's not a priest telling you all of this at 1230 in the morning and wondering. He said it was going to be a short homily, and he went on for quite a while, but it brings such great joy to all of us that Jesus, who's come to us, he comes to redeem us, to love us, and to walk with us. May we be faithful to him as he's always faithful to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let's stand. And as you and I have been chosen at baptism, God chose us to be a part of his family. Today we do something very special when we pray the creed on page 91. Generally we make a bow, 
But on Christmas and throughout Christmas, as we pray our profession of faith, we make a genuflection, as it says, every knee will bend at the name of Jesus. And it's the moment he is enfleshed in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we will all make a genuflection as an honor to our God made visible. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord Jesus, we reverence the moment that you came to this world. And ever since you came into this world, you have brought holiness. You've brought order to disorder. You brought light to darkness. For each of us, your sons and daughters, as we come to worship you and to be loved by you, hear our prayers. We need your help. We cannot do it without you that we present to you this morning. For the Catholic Church throughout the world, may it witness to the light of Christ's coming and draw all peoples of the world to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For peace in the land of Christ's birth and throughout the world, as Jesus was born the Prince of Peace, may conflicts be resolved and the persecuted be protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are spending their first Christmas after the death of a loved one, may they know the compassion of God, the love of family, and the support of community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Catholics in our parish or in our families who have drifted away or grown lax in their practice of the faith, may they grow closer to Christ through participation in Sunday Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish of St. Joseph, and for the financial support we need as we repaint and recarpet our church in January, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died in our parish, for Mickey McKenna, and for Leo and Virginia Voke, whom this Holy Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord has a gift for each of us. Let's offer our hearts and our souls, open ourselves to his guiding light. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Mary, we place our prayers into your beloved hands. We promise to walk with you, to look with your eyes, to see as you see to hear with your ears, that we hear your voice, and may we speak with our mouths the beauty and the love that you have given to each of us as we share that goodness with others. 
as you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our offertory. Please join us in singing Angels We Have Heard on High, number 64 in your Missal.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ and whom our nature is united in you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your arms. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds so that we may recognize in God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of all things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Eucharistic prayer. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, John Folda, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, 
Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask this through their, through their merits and prayers, in all things that we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by, by your, your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate, the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne, by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your church peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and I drink your blood. Let my own sins and sacrileges not bring me to condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body. Be for me a healing remedy. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 73 in your missile. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 73.
First Noel, number 90 in your missal.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feasts of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. For the final blessing at Mass, just on behalf of Father Worth, Father Fowl, Deacon Ken, Deacon Vaughan, and our good seminarian, Taylor Turnus, and on all of you who are participating tonight to wish you the greatest Christmas season. It's beautiful to see how families have come together. At four o'clock we had the children's mass and I am just so pleased by your participation and how many of you who are here tonight. We wish you a blessed day tomorrow, today. I wish you a blessed day today and all through the Christmas season, God's blessings to you, and God bless your family and those who are traveling. Our prayers are with you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth has illumined this most holy day. Drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together earthly and heavenly realms, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you shares with the church in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Thank Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, Joy to the World, number 62 in your missile. Thank you.